inside. Now you see Pearson playing away from the basket. Cornelius has 11 points. Pearson had the hot hand early, but uh, all of his 10 points came in the opening few minutes. Hancock kicks to Pearson. Shot clock becoming an issue. Nice looking pull up from the baseline. No panic that time in the half court set. That, that perfect. You know what? He took his man away from the basket. More room to operate. And we talked about that, that unorthodox game that gives him the ability to step away from the basket, knock down that shot. And that was Mason's first field goal, Fran, in over four minutes. Sutton kept it alive, and it's Villanova basketball. Pena back into the game. Here comes Waynes once again with the full head of steam. Pena has it blocked by Morrison, and it's a jump ball. Well, I'll tell you what, Malik Waynes is not bashful, is he? He only played. We've got a breakdown of points, Fran. Very interesting between the starters and the reserves for each team. Nova has relied almost exclusively on the starters. 49 points for the starters, only seven off the bench for Mason. 30 for the starters, 26 coming off the bench, and that further illustrates that Cam Long has been on the bench here in the second half with the re reoccurrence of the leg cramps. Coming up next on ESPN, you join Jay Williams and Justin Kutcher for more college basketball action from the Charleston Classic as UNC Wilmington faces the Nittany Lions of Penn State. Oh, nice. Hancock off the nice no look says that both of his Corys are still learning their roles this year. You know, we talk about game they played last year. They're more, they have to take more of a leadership role, not only in terms of their scoring, but in terms of the chemistry of the team. And Jay Wright lost three great leaders last year. And Dante Cunningham, Dwayne Anderson, and Shane Clark. Of course, Reggie Redding is, uh, will be eligible at the end of the fall semester. Look at that. Three, nice looking left-handed shot from the corner by Taylor King. See what he'll do in the Big East against bigger postmen. You don't get a chance to see him today because they're playing down to George Mason in terms of size, but he will stretch defenses this year, bringing bigger players away from the basket. Watch the matchup here. Luke Hancock at 6'5 was begging for the ball in the low post with Scotty Reynolds three inches shorter. They never found him. He goes Pearson. This was the matchup we saw. George Mason exploit early, and they do it again here. The A all rookie team a year ago who averaged seven points per game. This year so far averaging 15 and a half points per game, but he misses the front end. Under four minutes remaining, second half. You see how George Mason will switch all ball screens, so Pearson now on Scotty Reynolds. Nice job. Triple up fake. Sutton nearly traveled, and now back out to Reynolds with under 15 on the shot clock. Corey Fisher, nice help defense. Fisher with a dangerous pass. Cornelius after it, and it's Villanova basketball. Of course, Tommy Bacor and Hofstra was Jay's assistant, and they recruited Price to King so well. You remember a guy named Speedy Claxton? Shot clock. They didn't have a play, Doug. Clock inbounds play. That's why I always say in November, it's not about execution as much as it is about toughness. And right there, Jay Wright trying to draw something up. Didn't get a shot. 3.15 remaining. Hancock keeps the dribble. Goes wow. to the reverse. How about this guy? Really solid. I like his athleticism, too. He's really deceptive. Quick, gets up. Terrific feel for the game. I'm guessing that the Villanova defenders, even though they've been told by their coaches, didn't expect that until they saw it. Waynes kicks it back out. Fisher with the three. Boy, that's not his game. Way off the mark. Turn it back over to Mason. He's got a great player, Charles Jenkins. I watched him against UConn the other night, co-player of the year in the preseason. But this is good basketball, CAA style. You know, Tommy Pacora, I mentioned, assistant coach to uh, Jay Wright at, uh, at Hofstra. Done a great job with the pride. Under two and a half minutes remaining. Ten seconds on the shot clock. See how they're crowding Pearson. He gets through it nonetheless. Got off a good shot, but just missed it. Payne with a rebound for the Wildcats. Here comes Fisher. Right through four defenders, but he missed the layup. Boy, they've missed a ton of those transition layups today. Big possession right here if you're George Mason. Now, the one go-to guy who has been Ryan Pearson. 
The way uh, Andre Cornelius has been playing, yeah. I wouldn't mind him no, taking I, a big shot I was shot thinking here. the same thing. Create something for him off pick and roll. Let him get into the lane. He's going to have to go. Shot clock at six, and the foul given by Pena is his fifth. It comes 30 feet for the basket. That's the third disqualification. Slow them down off pick and roll. That down, he did not start this game because Jim Laranega was unhappy that he wore the wrong attire to the pre-tournament pre banquet last night. Yep. And so he came in pretty early, but uh, I don't know what he wore, but whatever he wore, Sure hasn't hurt his play. They're in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Well, we saw how good Cam Long was in the first half. So in practice last week, and and, and Jim Laranega was uh, very patient, but a lot of mistakes in practice. And they didn't really play great in their first two games. Wins over Liberty and Dartmouth. Bad, bad turnover there. And Pearson on the inbound. Cheap. Way long on the three. How about the size and strength to get inside? Didn't get the putback, but terrific job by Fisher to keep the possession alive and ultimately allow the Wildcats to pull back within two. Or five more possessions in this game. See, good effort right there. This means now that Hancock cannot run the baseline because the ball was deflected out of bounds. Get it in this time easily to Cornelius. Nice job to break the pressure. Foster and a blocking foul against Fisher. Good-looking stroke. Villanova down by three. 113 remaining in regulation. High pick and roll, four out, one in. Just trying to create for the guards. I'm not sure that's the shot you need to take. I get it to the rim. Sheep. He'll shoot two. Jay Wright, some key minutes in the second half. Even shots he wasn't able to miss shots. Also Antonio Pena. Both to two from the line, and this time Sutton is called for the over-the-back foul. Under the weather, not playing. Foster has it rim out. This Foster gets the second, so he's two of his last four in the last few seconds. See, Mason with a little token pressure. This is a good, this is a comeback game now. Villanova's got to play the comeback game. Try to get to the rim and get fouled. Fisher gets the rim go. and gets fouled. Yep. Go back to his. Go sit on the bench now, I think. Tied the tournament record and now broken the tournament record for single game free throws made. But only one out of two is not what Villanova needed. Hancock short on the first through the first three games of his college career. One out of two for the rookie out of Roanoke, Virginia. 70s, a sixth round NBA draft pick of the Detroit Pistons. Little zone right here off the high pick and roll. Let's see if it pays off. Well, three pointer by Waynes. That's the lead to one. And he had room because they went to the zone. Bad place to pick up the ball. The coffin corner nearly uh -huh. cost Cornelius a turnover, but his head coach bailed him out with a quick timeout. Immediately, or do you foul somebody you want to foul, or do you play the possession out? This is going to be interesting here. See, here comes a double. Dangerous pass. And there's the foul. Armwood picks up the personal. Right. A perfect four for four. Make it five for five. This game, this guy's got a lot of skill. All right. If you're Villanova, open up the lane. Get a chance to drive it. Fisher drops back to Reynolds. Picks up the dribble back out to Armwood, who takes the three for the lead, and he knocks that it down. That is unbelievable. Isaiah Armwood from Montrose Christian. Now, do you call timeout? The freshman who is only in the ball game because the rest of the front line <laughs> is fouled out. The last guy on the court you would expect to take a shot. Asked about him. I know his, his, the strength coach at Montrose Christian, Alan Stein. I said, tell me about Armwood. He said, he's a tough kid. He can handle you getting on him. He's got a lot of confidence. And you talk about confidence. Be the difference in the ball game here today. 13 seconds as the clock winds down. It's going to be a two-man game with Cornelius and Pearson. This is Cornelius, 6-5. Trying to create three seconds. Not going to get it. Got to fire it up. They can't do it. And Villanova survives. 
69-68. Villanova comes from nine down at the half and knocks off Mason.